these, these four questions. What is the shape of something? What's its form or structure? That's what he called its formal cause. Uh, what stuff, what kind of matter or substance is it made out of? That's what Aristotle calls the uh, material cause. Uh, what energy or power must something have in order to exist? And that's what he called the efficient cause. And finally, what is the purpose or goal of this thing that exists? And that's what he um, called the, <clears throat> the final cause. And just to give you an example that's not money, um, you know, when we answer the question of what, of what a tree is, according to Aristotle, we refer to these four causes. We say that a tree is what it is because it has a certain form. It has roots, trunks, branches, and leaves, and so on. It's composed of organic matter. That's the material cause. Carbon and oxygen, <coughs> and, so, and so on at that, at that um, <coughs> level. Um, it depends to some extent on sunlight, water, and soil, which is going to be the efficient cause of the tree being what it is and the way it is. And finally, the, the purpose or goal of the tree is to grow as much as it can and be as healthy as it can relative to its environment, right? That's its purpose in, in being a tree, okay? So um, now, what in the world are we gonna do with this when it comes to money? Um, how are answering these kinds of questions going to help us um, think about money and why should we, um, um, even bother. Um, and, and to put this sort of pointedly, before we even ask what money is, if we've, if we've got something that works as a medium of exchange, unit of account, store of value, does it really matter that we know what it is um, metaphysically? If that, uh, let me put that point again, if money functions, right, why do we need to ask what makes it possible for cowrie shells or gold or dollars or bitcoins or anything else to perform these functions? And if we have a form of money that works for us now, why do we need to know maybe about past forms of money? Well, there's a reason. Um, the reason is this, modern money does not function very well as the medium of exchange, the unit account, and the store of values that societies and individuals depend on it to be. Almost all modern economists, from Keynes to Hayek, Samuelson to Friedman, people across the political spectrum, agree that there's something very, very troubling about the nature of money, and that whatever that trouble is, it's something that economists in particular should be concerned to fix in order that the economy, the economic life in general, can be what we want it to be, which is some kind of means of allocating scarce resources um, based on uh, a variety of ends and uh, desires and purposes that we have. Um, and again, it turns out that almost all modern economists, and, and this is across the political spectrum, recognized that there, that there was a problem in money, and that problem is what's called the, the problem of hoarding. There's something about money itself, quite apart from what it can get for us on markets, that makes people want to hoard it. And by hoarding it to attain massive amounts of social power that people who don't have money cannot command. Now, the interesting thing is that last I checked, and I've been you know, studying economic theory for five or six years now, it, this is not a desirable situation according to almost any uh, seriously thinking um, economist. And a lot of people, myself included, think that at least part of the solution to the massive amounts of uh, wealth inequality that we're currently faced with in global capitalism has something to do with changing the nature of money. So we have to understand what money is um, if we want to set about changing it and perhaps to addressing um, inequality. And the way I go about this is to try to develop what I call a structural, genetic, and political account of money. And when I say structural, genetic, and political, it basically corresponds to what Aristotle calls the formal, efficient, and final causes.